Hey, Steve D, you ready? Yes. Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Dr. Brian Gwynn, and I am the director of the Masters of Public Health program at the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky, USA. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Masters of Public Health program that we offer uh, right here in Louisville. Uh, this presentation, I'll talk about what is public health and what do public health professionals do. And then um, I'll give you some information about what an MPH degree is and why might you might uh, why you might be interested in pursuing uh, this degree. So what is public health? I typically ask this to large audiences. And I guess the first thing we would wanna know is, well, what is health? And I think we all have a good grasp for what health is. Health is not just merely the absence of disease. There are lots of things that make up health. There might be emotional health or spiritual health or financial health. It's not just the absence of disease. And so health is a, can be an abstract con construct. And so public health is a discipline that addresses health at the population level. If you go see a doctor or a nurse practitioner, uh, that is healthcare go taking out, that is healthcare taking place at an individual level, I should say. Um, you're seeing one patient at a time. However, with public health, the patient is the population. That's what we're trying to do. So that's one, uh, I guess, big difference between medicine and practitioners of public health. All right, so what is public health? And there are a couple uh, canonical definitions here. And the one we usually use is the second one, we say public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through organized efforts. And so right away, you might think, what is the science and art of preventing disease? And so when we say science, what we're talking about is study design, observational research, statistics. We're talking about observing things in our reality and then looking for exposures that might explain certain health outcomes. But what do we mean by the art of health? What is the art of public health? And the art is really how we communicate. It's not just visual illustrations, it's how we talk. How I talk to a group of high school students is different than when I talk to a group of working professionals. So the, the, the art side of public health is a critical piece uh, in the public health landscape. So what do public health professionals do? Uh, we do a lot of things. The first thing we do is we try to understand, we wanna know what's going on in this shared reality. We conduct surveillance, we conduct research, we evaluate risk factors. We wanna know why and how people get sick. And once we understand, we wanna act, right? We wanna rem remediate risk factors. We wanna address behavioral issues, promote healthy activities, and we wanna create and implement policy. Remember, this is going on at the population level. So our, our public health initiatives have a very big reach because we're trying to address things at a very large population level. So what is a master's of public health degree? Well, an MPH degree is a graduate level degree that focuses on helping students learn important skills for professional employment in different occupational settings. Maybe it's a hospital, maybe it's a health insurance company, maybe it's a health department at the local, state, or national level. Uh, students who enroll in our MPH program can complete this degree in four semesters. In the first semester, all students take the same four core classes. And so we have different concentrations within the MPH program. We have epidemiology, health promotion, health policy, and biostatistics. We also have a sub-concentration within epidemiology called global maternal child health. This first semester, everybody takes the same four core classes. After that first semester, after that first semester, uh, let me back up. If you don't know what concentration you want when you enroll in school, that's no problem. You just need to let us know uh, what your concentration is towards the end of that first semester. Okay. Once you're through that first semester, you break out into your concentration specific courses. So if you select epidemiology, the last three semesters would be mostly courses in epidemiology. And that's true for the other concentrations that we have here at the University of Louisville. Now there are opportunities to take elective courses in the other disciplines. So it's not only just epi or health promotion or health policy, you can take other courses, but primarily after that first semester, we really dial it in and give you specialized training 
in one of these five concentrations. So an MPH program or an MPH degree will help prepare you for professional work. Uh, students that come to us and graduate, they work at local and state health departments. They work for the federal government. They work for lots of organizations within the federal government, the NIH, the CDC, the EPA, the FDA. Those are the big ones maybe you've heard of. There's actually a website called usajobs.gov, and you can type in epidemiology or behavioral scientist or health promotion, and you'll see all the job listings that fit under those key terms within the federal government. And sometimes there's hundreds of jobs that are available out there, and with a graduate degree, those jobs are high-paying jobs. So Consistently, we see uh, those jobs starting uh, between eighty and ninety thousand dollars, and sometimes uh, go on up well over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Students with an MPH degree also can work in private industry. That might include health insurance companies like Norton or healthcare industries. Uh, I'm sorry, insurance companies like Humana or healthcare industries like Norton Healthcare. There's also pharmaceutical companies that will hire you to do different activities. Uh, there's non-governmental organizations that you might go work for. And usually we see this later in someone's professional career. Uh, maybe they're not ready to retire, but they're ready to stop working 80 hours a week. They might go work for an NGO like the American Heart uh, Society or the uh, American Cancer Society or something like that. So why might you get an MPH degree? And I think the big takeaway is uh, we get to stay in the service of others. When you're involved in public health, that's something you get to do. And that's not true for every job you might have or every career path you might choose. Staying in the service of other people gives value and meaning to our daily lives, right? And that's, that's a critical piece, I think, when it comes to um, having some sort of satisfaction with your career. We also get to be unique individuals working towards a common goal. So in public health, we can be unique and we can be creative at problem solving. We're always coming in and having unique and novel problems that we have to solve. So we need creative people that can think outside the box. Um, and so that helps get us to our creative solutions. And it's not always obvious what those creative solutions will be or look like. So that's what's so unique about public health is uh, you can be creative and you can solve different problems that you'll come into. It's not a um, a job you'll go to every day and do the same thing over and over. You'll constantly uh, be met with different issues that, well, you're going to be asked to help fix to improve public health. And that's a really cool thing and unique opportunity within the public health landscape. One thing you'll learn um, if you get a public health degree at U of L or at any school is that usually there's not just one solution to one problem. That's a reductionist way of thinking. And one classic example that occurred here in the United States was the opioid pill epidemic on the East Coast. People were overdosing and dying from opioids. They were going down the I-75 corridor and getting literally thousands of milligrams of very powerful drugs uh, within a few hours. So the federal government thought, let's shut down those pain pill clinics. And they did. And there was a big celebration about doing that. But that didn't solve the problem because the problem wasn't the pain pills. The problem was people being addicted to the pain pills and the root causes that get people ever addicted in the first place. Those were never addressed. And so what did people do? Well, they turned towards street heroin. And because of that, we had outbreaks of HIV around the country and hepatitis C. And then when the heroin got contaminated with carfentanil and fentanyl, people started overdosing and dying. And so one big thing we learn here at UofL is a systems model approach to thinking about solving problems we don't just look at a silver bullet solution for one problem. We think about all the issues that surround, that surround that problem and all the potential solutions that might address that problem. And we even look back and say, what are the root causes for this problem? Let's get to addressing those issues. And so one example uh, recently we successfully did at the University of Louisville was address um, environmental lead poisoning in children right here in our community. And we were able to do this because we partnered with local politicians. Um, Cassie Chambers Armstrong here is a, a local council person within our local government, and she took up this cause. And we worked with attorneys with the city. That's Nick Hart here in Louisville. We worked with um, a health uh, policy specialist, someone with an MPH degree. That's Rebecca Hollenbach in the middle. 
And then I served as a content matter expert going to Metro Council and talking about the dangers and harms of lead poisoning. And uh, us four and many other people involved worked together um, to pass legislation rec recently aimed at preventing childhood lead poisoning. So if you're interested in policy at all, uh, we not only know how to do that, we've actually done that here at the University of Louisville, and we have great relationships within the city and we'll help you get behind the scenes access to see how this occurs. That's something unique you might not get at every uh, university. So I hope you uh, strongly consider an MPH degree and, and a public health career. It's a really exciting thing to do. And if you're interested, oh, well, my slide change. There it is. <laughs> if you're interested, please consider the University of Louisville. It's a great town. It's a great community. It's a beautiful campus, and there are lots of opportunities. And I would like to now turn it over to my colleague, Deepthi Jane, who will talk to you uh, a little bit more about what the University of Louisville has to offer. Deepthi, thank you so much. I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Deepti Janice Brian mentioned I am the Senior Admissions Coordinator here at the University of Louisville School of Public Health and Information Sciences. Thank you for being us, with us today. Uh, we just listened about MPH or Masters in Public Health and how public health can be a good career opportunity for uh, students who wants to work in healthcare, but maybe not as uh, physicians or practitioners. So a little bit about the university. Um, the University of Louisville is located in Kentucky. This map is to show you the location of Louisville. Louisville is uh, literally confused by many people in how to pronounce it. So this is just to show you that you can literally pronounce uh, Louisville in many forms. So Louisville, Louisville, uh, anything can be right, but not Louisville. Moving forward, here are some pictures of the city just to show you how the city looks like. The city is very popular for the big four uh, bridges in Louisville, which connects Louisville, Kentucky to Indiana. And then we also have a walking bridge, which has a beautiful, spectacular uh, display of fireworks, which is also called Thunder Over Louisville, which is held every summer. Then we have beautiful uh, river view. So you can have, uh, you know, walk around the parks uh, around the river, or you can also go to Jerioki Park, which is right in the middle of the city, uh, gives you beautiful nature view for relaxation. Talking about activities to do in Louisville, few pictures of, um, I'm sorry, my slide is moving too fast or slow. Here we go. So a few pictures of uh, the important landmarks or historical landmarks in Louisville. You can see here Church Churchill Down, which is the historical landmark or place where the Derby Festival takes place. Derby is the biggest horse racing um, sports in the United States, or you can say in the entire world, which happens here in Louisville, Kentucky. We have the Slugger Museum. Uh, where baseballs are made as well, Bas baseball bats, sorry. Then we have the Muhammad Ali Center, and we have uh, the Fort Street Life, which is for people who like partying or want to hang out with friends. So it's right in downtown here in Louisville. About the University of Louisville, University of Louisville is a public university which was founded in 1798. It's a research one doctoral university that means with very high research activities, like even in public health, we offer five, four PhD degrees in public health sciences that can help you do your research in public health. We are one of the nation's top producers of student Fulbright awards. Education USA Canada would be the best uh, guide to tell you more about Fulbright scholarships that are available to national as well as international students. Then we are named best of the best for LGBTQ inclusivity for the sixth time by Campus Pride Index. We are home to over 23,000 students from across the United States and over 95 countries. We do have many students from Canada as well. And we were voted the most beautiful campus in Kentucky 
uh, with 280 plus acres of uh, campus in Belknap, which was awarded for the lush gardens and campus trees. So a little bit about the campus that you will be coming to. Moving forward, um, just to give you a little bit history about the School of Public Health, the School of Public Health at the University of Louisville was one of the nation's first public health school, which was opened in 1919. Later on in 1923, it was absorbed by the University of Louisville School of Medicine due to warning enrollments. But later, again, in 19, uh, late 1990s, it uh, came into place and uh, it's open since then. Here are the academic programs that we offer. Dr. Gwen just mentioned about the MPH program, but apart from that, we offer undergraduate degree programs in public health with track in social justice and health equity or a professional track in pre-health studies, which is also called as a pre-med track. We also offer an accelerated bachelor's program, which can take you to the master's of public health. So literally in five years, you will have two bachelors, uh, sorry, two degrees, a bachelor and a master's in public health. In graduate programs, we offer Master's of Public Health, Master's in Biostatistics, Master's in Epidemiology, Master's in Health Administration, Master's of Science in Clinical Investigation Sciences, and we have started with a new degree, which is a dual degree in MPH and Health Administration as well. We also offer four PhD degrees, as mentioned earlier, in various specializations in public health sciences. And we offer few online programs with the graduate certificate in public health training being the newest in them, which is starting in spring 2023. It's going to be a one year program wherein you can transfer all your credits from the graduate certificate to the master's of public health program. Here are a few of our alumni who have graduated from the School of uh, Public Health, just to give you an idea of where they are working, what they are doing, and the career opportunities that you can apply to after you graduate. So um, my favorite one from this slide is uh, Dr. Tasha Golden. She has done her PhD in Health Promotion and Behavioral Sciences. The reason why I say she is my favorite is because she was not at all from a public health background. She has a bachelor's and a master's degree in music. And then she later brought that music into her uh, public health uh, degree and uh, kind of studied about behavioral changes that you can make to people's life using that and making health uh, you can say you can making health uh, prosperity or health growth in uh, you know using the music background that they have. Here are a few pictures of the campus. So uh, you can see a Graymeyer Hall there, and then the Augusta Ross in the Thinker statue. Uh, we have a huge student recreation center with a capacity of ten thousand students, and we have a Cardinal Stadium for our games. You can also visit our website with the link given there to go through a virtual tour of the campus. We will be hosting a virtual public health preview day on January 28th, that is a Saturday between 9 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to go to our website and register for the event. This event will give you an overview of all the public health programs that we offer about the school, and you will have an opportunity to meet with various faculty members, our current students and alumni to know more about their experiences. The University of Louisville is housed in downtown Louisville um, uh, School of Public Health. So this is our address, the website address and email addresses are mentioned here. Feel free to contact us directly on our email mentioned or the phone number given here. Thank you very much. And we will open the floor for any questions you might have now. Thank you, Deepti, for that wonderful overview of the city and our school. I think you hit on a lot of things that I didn't think about. I really appreciate you uh, bringing that up. Thank you. I would like to mention uh, one more thing about our campuses. So the University of Louisville has two main campuses. One is the Belknap campus, which is like three, three and a half miles away from downtown Louisville. 
And the second campus is the Health and Sciences Campus, which is housed in downtown Louisville. So the University of Louisville School of Public Health has uh, offices in both the campuses. The undergraduate office is in Belknap and the graduate office for graduate classes are all in downtown Louisville, which is also known as the medical hub where students will be surrounded by healthcare institute, organizations, hospitals. So it's kind of gives them a very good opportunity to study as well as uh, maybe do an internship, practice, or take classes from other schools around it. Wonderful. And Deepti, let me ask you this. You're, you haven't lived in Louisville your whole life. What, what are your three favorite things about the city? My three favorite things. Um, my first favorite thing is that um, it's, very to, it's very easy to drive around Louisville. Uh, the traffic's not bad. Uh, it's it's not a small city, I would say. It's a mid-sized city, and it's very easy to go from uh, downtown Louisville to maybe East End or to the South End. So the connectivity is the favorite thing I love. Um, the second thing I love is there's always something to do in every season of the year. So, for example, summer, you have the Derby, you have the Thunder over Louisville. In um, springtime, you have beautiful gardens that you can visit. And in uh, autumn time, you have this big, huge parks where you can walk around and see beautiful colors changing. And winter, yes, uh, everyone doesn't love winter, but I like winter because I have always, you know, uh, lived in tropical places. So for me, when I experienced winter here for the first time, I was really happy. Uh, we get a little bit snow, but not that much. So it's kind of a perfect thing where, you know, you can have a little bit of snow, but not like kind of stuck in your house, not able to go out. So that is my second thing. Mm -hmm. um, my third favorite thing of Louisville uh, would be um, the diversity. I'm from India, um, so I, uh, you know, the, the 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 time when I decided to come here to Louisville and live here, I was really concerned about, oh, you know, how the city would be because it's not like a big metropolitan city like New York or any city in California or in Texas. So I was not very sure if I would be able to meet with people from different backgrounds, but I was surprised. Um, we do have so many diverse background people, not only in the university, but also in the city. So it kind of gave me a very good um, kind of a comfortable environment. Yeah, Louisville really is a nice town. I've lived here my entire life, uh, 44 years, and uh, we have a wonderful park system. It is easy to travel around town without getting on the interstates. Um, it's been described as the most northern southern city or the southernmost northern city or the biggest small city in the United States. And uh, one thing that's, I think, taken for granted by people that live here, you mentioned diversity, uh, that spills over into diversity of food options. And I certainly love to eat. And the, the amount of different opportunities at different restaurants is really quite remarkable here in our small town. Anything from Vietnamese street food to dim sum to Indian to you name it, American, wh whatever you want, you can have here. Uh, which I tend to like. Uh, but Louisville is a great town. So uh, hopefully yeah. if you're listening to this, you, you consider the school, but also consider the city where you're going. And remember that uh, we stand behind our city, right, Deepti? <laughs> we do. And I would like to add to that, that it's not very expensive to live here. So, uh, you know, if you compare it to any big metropolitan city, you will end up spending very less um, because uh, even like food option, definitely if you want to go out and eat, uh, you might think that I might spend a fortune, but it's not like that. Here, it's quite affordable. So as comparison to New York or any other bigger cities, you will probably spend only 6 or $7 out of 10 if you're spending 10 there. So, Yeah, very good. I guess the last thing I'll say is uh, traveling is not difficult. We have a very large international airport, usually... Um, I've flown to Canada uh, with one stopover in Minneapolis or Denver. Um, so it's easy to go to a lot of places right here because we're kind of, we're not quite in the middle of the United States, but we're we're not far on a coast either. So it's pretty easy to travel um, out of here once you get here. That's um, true. Yeah. 
That's true. Uh, there are direct flights from here to Chicago or to New York, or if you want to go to Atlanta, uh, big airports there, Washington, D.C. Um, Chicago is just like a little under five hours drive from Louisville. So I have done that a couple of times. It's a beautiful drive where you can uh, drive around the huge giant uh, windmills. So it's kind of a beautiful experience. And uh, again, Canada is not far from Chicago. So that way, you know, if you want to do that drive, it's easy. It is an easy drive. It's also a short flight to Chicago. It's a, a one hour flight, but because they're in central time, you take off at 9 a.m., you land at 9 a.m. Um, in central time. So um, really easy to get around internationally. Uh, I'm not sure there's anyone here uh, to ask us questions, and I don't want to have a a uh, long time here at the end of, of dead time. Deepthi, we should wrap this up. Is there any closing thoughts you might have? Um, not as of now, I would say uh, we have few attendees I can see. So if they have any questions, oh, uh, this is the time if they want to ask it or um, you have our contact details right there, feel free to reach out to us. We also have a virtual uh, meeting link, virtual link in our website where you can book a meeting with one of the admissions counselor to talk more about any particular program. Um, do plan to attend our public health review day because we also give out uh, application fee waivers or it's a very good opportunity when you are still confused about which path to take in public health if you're confused about specializations or if you want to talk more to our faculties or our current students. Very good. Are there any any last questions from any of the attendees? No? Well, like Deepthi said, please reach out to us and please come to our preview day. We look forward to hearing from you and answering any questions you have. And if it's if it's okay with everyone, I think uh, Deepthi will go ahead and um, in the presentation here, so it's not a long record time for the people that will watch this later. Thank you, Dr. Wynn. All right, thank you thank so you. much. Um, thank you to uh, our host here um, who recorded this for us. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully talk to people later. Goodbye. <laughs>